So, Michaela, mm-hmm. I've got a question for you. Of and course. For a change, it's not rude. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't involve bodily functions. Well, I hope not. Uh, what's one of your greatest fears? Oh, well, I, you know, the usual stuff. I don't like um, spiders and snakes and I'm not very adventurous, so I don't uh, do heights and things like that. But probably the biggest fear would be being 80-year-old and dying on my own and no one finding me for a couple of weeks because that would be pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit unsavory. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit depressed now. I think we should move on. Okay. Welcome to the Trading's Business Show, helping you get off the tools and into true business ownership so you can spend more time doing the things that matter most. Now, here are your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. So welcome back to the Trading's Business Show. Uh G'day to anybody who's uh, sitting on their own in their lounge room. Please don't die because, uh, you know. <laughs> oh my well, they won't die alone. They have us. <laughs> exactly. You'll be listening to us. Oh, my God. If that's the last sounds you hear. They've died uh, of boredom. <laughs> Come on. I've got a higher opinion of us than you do by the sound <laughs> of it. Uh, let's, let's talk about today's interview. This one um, is quite significant for us, and it took us a little while to, to uh, get to interviewing this particular guest, but... Um, it was it was worth it in the end, wasn't it? It was, and uh, you'll hear how why he's such an important guest to us and mm-hmm. uh, in the interview. But uh, besides that, he talks about he being David Dugan. We mm-hmm. should introduce him <laughs> uh, about strategic partnerships, which is something that uh, I think a lot of trade based businesses don't look at the potential that they can by working with other people in their industry or out of their industry to really grow their business. And I think that the potential for partnerships for tradies is just massive. And so is the opportunity for alliteration of the potential for partnerships. (laughs) Sorry, I'm really just taking the mickey out of you today, aren't I? What did I do? (laughs) Nothing. Um, So, yes, listeners, uh, partnerships, I mean, great examples are real estate agents uh, for, you know, anybody in the maintenance trades, plumbing or electrical or anything like that. And I think it it is a bit of a mystery for a lot of tradespeople in business of how do you actually get those set up and, um, you know, what's the right way, the wrong way, how do you approach those people? And so David certainly uh, lifts the lid on a lot of that stuff in today's interview. Yeah, and certainly, um, you know, working with partnerships can make getting new leads a lot easier and uh, there's certainly uh, a lot to be learnt in today's episode as well as a really cool checklist at the end. So listen out for that. And welcome to another episode of, well, actually a very special episode of the Tradies Business Show the today, Warwick. It is. We are having a celebration today. and we the alcohol? Well, we've reached a milestone. So we need it's, party it's a good milestone, actually. It is. We have reached 10,000 people that have enjoyed our show. So that's pretty amazing. So to celebrate, we thought we'd get the genius. The Godfather. That put the magic into our show. I feel like I'm sitting in the Godfather's office here. (laughs) Listeners, this show wouldn't be around if it wasn't for our guest today. Mr. David Dugan, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome, guys. Great to have you. Congratulations, 10,000 in such a short period of time. So you're uh, you're obviously knocking it out of the park and people loving what you do and uh, knowing the two of you, I can see why. So good to, have, good to have you guys together and see how well you've been doing. Yeah, so we thought it would be great to get you on and you've got a lot of great knowledge that our traders can use. So very excited. And because you're such a special guest, we're actually going to read your bio, which we don't normally do. <laughs> we're but we prepared need... today. We've yes, actually yes. done some preparation <laughs> we, for this. We <laughs> actually have to get this right, Warwick. <laughs> well, well, I'll leave that to you, Michaela, yes, because okay. you know I'm not the detailed person. So I love David's um, motto is about inspiring people to do what they love best. He's a world-class business coach and social entrepreneur and the founder and creator of the Elite 500 Mastermind Program, which helps educate and inspire business owners and entrepreneurs to achieve personal and business success. So thank you very much for joining us, David. Great to be here. Thanks very much. And good to see all the good stuff you're putting out there in the tradie community and beyond. So good stuff. So should we... Are you going to say more about David or will we oh, let no, David no, it's, speak for himself? Yeah, that no, it, that was the level of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're back to our normal style now. 
So, uh, mate, great to be sitting here with you. Um, look, we, we get everybody to give us uh, a bit of a brief introduction to who they are and what they do. But uh, apart from the formal uh, introduction, Dave, you want to tell our listeners a little bit about who you are, I guess, and a bit about your background as well, how you came to be doing what you're doing today? Great, cool. Well, I'm a business mentor and coach, uh, so I help business owners to scale their business uh, through power of productizing and partnerships, which we we're going to talk about today. But what most people don't know is that I actually started my life in the trade industry. I grew up my, uh, my whole life in the building industry. My dad was a builder, and so every holiday I was out there doing different things, and my first job was as a brickies labourer. And uh, there are brickies labourers, man, those guys... They deserve, they deserve a medal because it is the toughest job and I didn't last very long. How, how long did you last? Uh, <laughs> I'll put you on the spot now. I lasted two weeks. <laughs> I was least it measured in it, weeks, it, not it, hours. It was two weeks. Uh, and the only reason I stopped was because my hands swelled up so much. The cuts were on my, and this was before you had all those great little levers that you could carry the bricks and all the things that made it easy. So I'm not going to say how many years ago, but it was a couple of decades. <laughs> and, uh, and it was tough. Then I became a plasterer's labourer. And then I became a general dog's body, uh, laborer. And, uh, I gotta be fair. I actually enjoyed it. I love the company. I love the people. I love the diversity. I love the rawness and the authenticity of people in the trades. You know, they're, the, the, I think the, the word salt of the earth comes from tradies, you know, they're, and yeah. farmers because of the, the real nature. And they don't, there's no BS. Mm-hmm. They just tell you how it is and they just get on with doing their thing. I, and I, the other thing is, I found that they were just so hard workers as far as physically getting out there and doing stuff, regardless whether it's hot and cold. But uh, that's how I started. That was my first income. And uh, I remember uh, being on a really big high-rise job in Brisbane in uh, 1989-ish. And basically, the, the it was a high-rise. Some people may know it. And I went bankrupt. The developers, it was three-quarters of the way up. And basically everyone was going to lose their money. It was literally the week before Christmas before they were going to pay everyone out and everyone freaked out, including me, because all the money I was going to get paid, I got, it got, got done. And, uh, all I remember were all the plumbers, uh, police came, locked the whole place down, but all the plumbers were going around and all that, because it's multi-story, it's about 15, 20 stories or so and going to every single pipe, soaring off all pipes, getting as much <laughs> copper as they could. The electricians were stripping every bit of, uh, every yep. bit of cabling. You know, the, the, everyone was just, it was, it was on for young and old and, um, you yeah, know, police came in and locked it down. But I just remember being there and thinking literally the week before sitting with an architect, uh, an architect who was on site and, um, just going, mate, you've got the best job in the world. You work for yourself. You're doing this stuff. You've got these boys working for you. And he goes, yeah, I do. It's great. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in here for the rest of my life. Then this incident happened and, and basically everyone lost the money. He had to close his business. And I just remember one of the guys saying to me, look, if you, if you have an opportunity to kind of do something else, uh, you know, it's a bit risky what we're doing, uh, go and do it. And basically that, you know, through the encouragement of the guys that are on the site, they said, you uh, try and do something else. And, and so I did. So I went back. I repeated high school. And, uh, and this is at Christmas, so I had to beg the school to take me back and work my butt off, work harder than I ever had before. And I was fortunate enough to get into university. I originally trained as a dentist. Uh, and, uh, you know, I loved that, joined the Navy, had some fun there, and then left. And my last jobs, I retired as a commander of the Navy. And what I did was coaching. That was what I did. That was my official job as an executive coach. And I love business and studied that and then brought the two together, business and coaching. And, and here I am today mentoring a whole group of amazing uh, business owners who want to take their business to the next level and have a lifestyle at the same time. And what do you love most about that? Like, What do you get out of helping those business owners? Yeah, the, th- the thrill of seeing someone who has got a passion inside of them that... They just know that they can do it, but they just don't know how. And then they just see the code. And when they lock that code together, it's like, and it starts happening. That is the super coolest when that lights go on. But the difference between that and say regular coaching is lights go on and there's cha-ching, ka-ching in the bank account. <laughs> you know, the old saying, you know, happy wife, happy life. When the money's coming in and you can do what you want to do, if you want to take a bit of time out, you can do it. Or, you know, if you actually want to do something as simple as, going on a holiday with your kids, like a decent holiday where you don't have to scrimp and save and do the economy and everything. Like, it's just to have choices. And I, for a lot of people, 
I don't think a lot of people realize how little they need to do it. They just need to have a bit of time and money. So that's what I love about coaching and I believe it's so important. You know, it was, that's how I originally met you. You know, you, you, you know, you've been doing it, uh, I think, especially in your game longer than I have almost. So, uh, you know, there's very few people I respect that as far as a coach goes and especially in your, your niche, you're, you know, you're, you're a gold at it. So, um, I'm a big fan and, uh, it's good to put the two of you guys together. I can see you both have a talent and, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about partnerships. He so. saw the magic. <laughs> He's probably not talking about the podcast. <laughs> and so one of the things that you're working with now is the Elite 500 Mastermind program. So tell us a little bit more about that and how important you feel masterminds are to growing a business. Yeah. What I found is that a lot of people are lonely in business. You know, they're, as far as business owners go, yeah, they, they can't talk to their team or if they do it looks it's a bit funny and they don't really want to tell them what's really going on mm. uh, they can't talk to family because if you if they don't own a business then no one actually understands what what they're actually talking about and the real challenges people give you a barbecue advice and to be the truth it's all superficial they don't really understand and so a lot of you know in the navy we talk about you know the loneliness of command i definitely think that a lot of people that are business owners that go they just want to mix with people on that same level so that's a big part of it because you you learn as much from other people as you do from yourself and so uh, for me that was that was powerful as well and the second thing is that that there's a level of accountability there's also a level of um, education information. I think when people just know what they need to do and they can see a really clear path how to do it, then they can then they can put it all together and all of a sudden they have the lifestyle of the of their dreams. And for me, I, I I've done literally thousands. I think it's about three and a half thousand individuals, and I know how much money they need to live their ideal lifestyle, and it's way less than most people think. Most people want to ask them a question: How much money do you have to be like? Live the best lifestyle. What would that be for you? Maybe not the jet and the chauffeur out the front, but the mm-hmm. level below that. And most people are surprised if they actually do the numbers on how to how to do that. And maybe even I can actually give that to you guys. I've got a little like, simple spreadsheet. I've got not a spreadsheet, it's a little checklist for people to work that. Happy to give that to the listeners if they um, if they you know yep. go onto your, yeah, your podcast. Ahead. But for most people, it's between one hundred and fifty and three hundred fifty thousand. And what I love about business, if someone's got a passion for business or even they're fantastically skilled at what they do, is to create a business that gives you between 150000 and $150,000 to $350,000 of cash is really simple. Like it's actually not that hard at all if people just knew how. So I'm passionate about helping people do that. And I call it 500 to 500 because I'm helping 500 business owners. Uh, well, that's my passion to get that number up there, um, to get to 500,000 turnover in their business, then 500,000 in net profit, mm-hmm. then 500,000 they can have on a single product or single promotion they're doing. And then the next step is 500,000 that we donate to worthy causes. So 500 people giving 500,000, that's $25 million. And we can do a huge amount because, you know, it's the, it's the tradies out there. It's the, the, the people that have, Determined enough and bold enough and sometimes a little bit crazy who decide I'm going to start a business, start a podcast, <laughs> start a podcast. You know, they're the ones who, like, we're the ones who are going to change the world. We're the ones, it doesn't matter what government's in, in power, they're going to do a certain amount. We employ more people on the, on, on the planet. Uh, we are the backbone of the country. If there's only way to get our, our Australia to, up to the level that I believe it can be, or even international as well, it's the, it's the business owners and there's an entrepreneurial revolution happening now. So I want to be a, a part of assisting the people, you know, uh, anyone who's got a dream or a passion to, to make a difference and make a lot of money, then, you know, they're the people I want to hang around. That's, that's what I created the program for. And it's, it's, um, certainly resonates with me, Dave, and we've, um, known each other for a little while now, but, uh, you know, I got into this whole coaching gig, not because it was a good business idea or because of the money I could make. Um, <clears throat> there's certainly been some challenging times as a coach, but uh, for me, it really is about having that impact. And, um, and just like you, mate, the, to see some of my tradie clients just literally, and I'm going to use a wank word, listeners. I know I committed not to do this when we started this thing, but um, hey, transform their lives. <laughs> uh, but it, it is it is so fulfilling, and uh, I've honestly had clients share stories with me um, that's that's literally brought a tear to my eye because it is just 
it's such a great feeling to see people do that. So the impact of business owners with employment and everything, and I know we're going to talk some specifics about how we can help our listeners do more of that today, um, but that, that impact that our tradie clients have, our tradie listeners have, is um, is massive and, and far-reaching. So, And so having two of the best mentors <clears throat> around, of course, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I did coaching, it didn't work for me. You know, oh, you know, it's it's not always great. Where to, you know, it's the best thing I think ever for every business owner should have a coach and a mentor. So here you guys, do your pitch. What do you reckon? <laughs> We're Come on. The spot, right? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm to be a bit contrarian on this. I want to say that that coaching actually isn't for everyone. Um, although I, I agree with you, I think most business owners. Uh, need to have uh, an external. It doesn't always have to be a coach. It could be a board of advisors. It could be a mentor. Uh, it could be a peer group. It could be a mastermind group. So there's other ways to get that external advice. The one thing different around coaching is it's more intimate. Mm. And so you get a much better understanding. And um, when people say that it didn't work, I mean, there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, if, if we have to look at it with really close eyes, I'd say, how well did the person who was being coached, how, how well did they actually follow through? Yeah. Like, did they do all their homework? Did they really, really follow through? And, and 99% of the time is that they actually didn't. And that, that it's not that, that it didn't work, is that they didn't work it. So that's part of it. And also, to be fair, there's, you don't have to be licensed to be coached. I had to do five years of study to be a dentist. I racked up five uni qualifications and, uh, I didn't need to get anything to become. Oh, actually, I did do an executive coaching course, but that wasn't, you know, mandatory. It wasn't government regulation. So there were some people who say they're coaches. You know, they may have got some experience, uh, and they might have some good, relatively good advice. But coaching, you know, I've been a commander. I've been a dentist. I've led um, large uh, companies. Is by far absolute country like mile more challenging than anything else because it means you've got to be a marketer, you've got to be a psychologist, you need to be a relationship counsellor, you've got to be a whiz on finances, a whiz on, you know, uh, HR people. So it's like the, it's like the sum of all everything else is, is to become a coach. So there are people that, you know, to be fair, some of those people, some of them may even be listening now. When I started <laughs> as a coach, I, I was crap. Are you allowed to swear on this one? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. all right. So I think like, I was, it, yeah, I was, I was shit out at it, yeah. you know, uh, I, I was well meaning and I really, anyone who's listening, sorry that you've been, <laughs> you're been you're practicing on them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just takes a bit of time and experience. So for me, I think it works. You got to work it. You got to make sure it's the right fit for you. You know, check in that the coach has actually got some experience and what that experience has been and also your expectations from them and vice versa. So. Uh, it is for anyone who's committed to grow their business. If you're committed to growing business, I don't know how you can do it without someone on the outside really effectively engaged with what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's my angle. For me, I think the big thing, <clears throat> and we will get off the whole coaching subject, but, you know, obviously, uh, it's a big part of, uh, I guess how you brought us together, Dave. Um, but for me, I think people need to be open to feedback for it to work. Mm. Um, and, and that feedback, as you say, could come from, uh, you know, somebody in your same industry or another trade, you know, if you're an electrician, maybe you've got a, a plumber who's actually quite successful uh, and he can see things in your electrical business that you can't see. So um, I think that willingness to accept feedback and then act on it, um, process it obviously through your own lens, but uh, to be able to act on that feedback I think is, is the key to success from getting advice or coaching from anybody. So Cool. So one of your passion spots, Dave, is partnership and alliances. And it's not really something, you know, we've touched on it on the show, but I really want to deep dive into that today and see how this particular market I don't think is great at doing this or don't really look outside their immediate surrounds at the possibilities and leverage things that they have access to. So talk us through your view of partnerships and why you feel they're so important. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm a massive fan of this space because I, there is no way that I know that you can that you can grow a business very quickly, as in like within a couple of weeks, grow a business, get a heap more leads in, where it's going to cost you almost nothing, if not nothing. You're not going to have to pay any branding. You've got absolute certainty. You've got clarity. 
uh, you've got complete control uh, of what actually goes on compared to anything else out there to grow your business. It's like it's the easiest, simplest thing, and yet it's what 99.9% of people don't actually do. So, I, you know, the power of actually collaborating or partnerships is something that um, when I when I started out and I was sort of struggling in my business, it was my go-to, and the people that I've helped consistently year on year, we can double the turnover of business without doing really anything else in the business uh, from a marketing perspective, just focusing on the power of partnerships. They'll double their turnover and then double and double and so that it, and it continues on. And the thing about it is it's really fun and you can have good fun with it. You can actually mix and mingle. And what I've found is that it takes business owners to a level that's higher than what they ever thought they could go and they get exposed to the opportunity that they never even expected that they could be exposed to. So uh, apart from all the fun and fantastic stuff that goes on with that and meeting a heap more people, you just make a heap more money. So that, that would be why I'd be saying everyone, doesn't matter who you are, you're a business, you've got to be growing your business through partnerships. So I don't have to spend any more money on marketing and I can increase my turnover. Significantly and quickly. It's not not like, oh, I'm going to spend, you know, the next three months uh, paying SEO, you know, search engine optimization for my website and spend a lot, of, which is important. You absolutely need to do that and hope that something's going to be coming in in four months, five months, six months, et cetera, et cetera. No, this is like literally we go out, Today, you start doing these things, go and do these meetings, and all of a sudden, you'll start ha- have things happening to you literally the next week. And they're, generally speaking, going to be much better clients that come to you uh, and much easier. Uh, uh, they're, they're pre-sold when they come to you. They're already like, oh, wow, this is great. I want to be involved with what whatever your your trade actually is. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a massive fan, and it's so easy. So everyone who's listening to this, like, you totally can do it, and you can do it. I expect... You know, I'd expect that, uh, you know, we're going to give some guys and, uh, and girls who are listening to this tips on what to actually do. But literally, you'll finish listening to this. I would say a homework would be that go out there in the next 24 hours, do some of these actions, and you'll see a significant shift in your business literally straight away. So to get started, what's the first step? What do, what do they need to do? Well, um Maybe the best thing for me to do is, uh, rather than going to the steps, actually kind of maybe give a few examples of, of what, what is collaboration, what is partnerships. And, uh, I started off in the trade business and I, I remember way, way back, there was a roof restoration company and, uh, they wanted some help on, you know, growing their business. And I'm thinking, man, how do we actually do this? So what we, what we did is, is they work with people who had just renovated their home so we did some assessment and analysis of you know who are the clients that they had in the past so that's a good thing first off is analyze the clients in the past where did they come from and they were basically people who were renovating their houses were doing roof restoration and so i thought okay cool so if if you're getting roof restoration and we want to get more leads coming in and we want to be really really competitive how do we do that so we actually realized that people who got their roof restored, the step before that is they got their driveway fixed up and the step before that is they had their landscaping done and the step before that is they actually got their curtains done and the step before that is they got their painting done, they did painting internal. Then the step before that is they had their kitchens and bathrooms done uh, and, and carpets were in there as well. So it started like, it was like, oh my God, there's actually a chain. They, you know, they start. So what we did is we went right back to the beginning. The first we went to the kitchen guys, um, and the bathroom restoration guys and started talking to them and said, right, uh, ask them, you know, around how they get their business, how, they, how I can help you. And in the end, it was just like, cool. We, every lead that you get in that becomes a client. How would you like to give them a, and whatever we came up there, it was a little flyer. It was a discount for their roof restoration. So we actually got the clients way, way earlier. And the good thing about that with them is it made the, it made the uh, kitchen guys and the uh, kitchen and bathrooms guys look great because they actually were giving a gift straight away. It's like, hey, here's a gift. Here's a voucher for, for $250 to get your roof restoration. And all of a sudden there was a win-win. So the thing with partnerships is the client wins. The partner wins and you win, and that's a, a, a great little blend. And then we just did that throughout all the other trades that were beforehand, 
and all of a sudden their business went ballistic. They weren't spending nearly as much money on anything else and ended up being great. Now, what they started to play with is actually giving the some of these other trades or giving them lots of leads, actually giving them a slice of the action as well. So giving instead of paying all this money out for so-called marketers and branding people and all their sexy stuff, they said, well, we've got... You know, fifteen percent of our of our income going out. Why don't we go and give ten percent of it to the guys who are actually giving us the business? And all of a sudden, everyone's winning. Mm. You know, except for maybe the marketing guys. <laughs> so I think that's just a great example of how partnerships work. So uh, in a partnership, everyone wins. It, that's the first thing, and you cl- collaborating together. And I think in a trade, that's a the great example. But uh, in actually setting up a, a partnership, uh, the thing around that is to just remember that that if you're listening to this, that whatever your business is, you have value. There is a value. People are buying what you're doing. You have a value. So looking at who else shares that same client or a similar client to you. So in the trade, it's very easy or relatively easy. Uh, you can look at the people that are renovating houses, if that's that, or new homes, and just looking at who else shares that client. Architects, real estate agents, Builders, if let's say if you're a, a plumber, uh, it could be builders. Uh, there would be, it might be designers. And usually some, there's usually, there's some of the obvious ones. Then there's usually some left field ones as well. So it could be, uh, instead of an architect, maybe it's the, uh, it could be a designer, like a, a just a, 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 forget the word, basically the, the level where they're just doing the drawing. So it might be someone, draftsman. draftsman, thank you, that was what I was looking for. So it could be a draftsman. Sometimes it can be as left field as like a cleaners, like commercial cleaning, which is not maybe exactly in that space, um, but you'll find that they'll be in the note. A lot of times um, reps can be great partners for you as well because they're out there and maybe not exactly trades reps. They can be reps who go through, if you, let's say if you're in the uh, in commercial and a commercial trade, then it might be looking at who goes to a lot of commercial offices. So, you know, it could be cleaners in that space because they know if they're clean, they're going to be moving, or it could be furniture, um, moving, you know, people who move people in and out, they're furniture type companies or removalist companies. So the first step is really look at one to know that you have great value. Second thing is go, who already shares your ideal client? And then, then the thing is you create a list around who they are. And the easiest way I find to do that is to do it generic. Rather than putting a person's name, go, right, okay, architects, real estate agents, builders, cleaners. It could be, let's say if you're in commercial again, it could be the leasing agents or it could be the property managers. So that's a property manager. Obviously, that's, that's pretty obvious, but you never know where you can go in that space. That It could be one property manager, another property manager. <clears throat> and then have a chat with them and say, hey, and this is the simple strategy I use, is that most people, when they try and go into a partnership, the biggest no-no, like the thing not to do, is to go in there and start talking about what you do. Oh, I'm a plumber. I'm a <laughs> electrician. I'm this. It's like that's the worst thing you can do. Because when you're doing that, it's all about you. So in partnerships, it's all about what's in it for the person, the person you're talking to. And so in that sense, I'd be saying, go in there and you want to ask them, this is the question you write down. So when you when you leave this podcast, or right now, if you're in your car, pull over, you know, grab, grab your receipt or a piece of paper and write this one down. You want to just ask this one question, what can I do for you? Or what can I help you with? And you'll be surprised on what people come up with. They'll often be surprised you ask the mm. question. Yeah. And what can I help you with? What's, what are you trying to get done? And I often will say, what are you trying to get done? And usually if they're an employee, they don't own the business. Let's say, uh, a real estate agent, they're not the owner of the business, but they're uh, an agent there. There'll be a company goal. Like, oh, we're going to get a certain number of sales or whatever it is. There'll be a company goal, but the trick with this is to go, yeah, okay, well, that's what you're, you're trying to get done. They'll, that's the superficial answer. Then, the, then superficial and yet important. Then the next thing, and this is the goal, is to go, what are you personally trying to get done? And people go, oh, what do you, what do you mean? Like, like, what are you trying to get done? Are you wanting a raise? Are you wanting to get, even if you're the owner of the business, they'll still want something personally. I'm looking to sell the business. Okay, great. Well, you know, I, I think I can help you with that. And or whatever you can help them out with. And sometimes you may not be able to. And sometimes it can just be, you know what? Look, that's great. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help you out, please let me know. But I reckon Bob down the road, he'd be great for someone for you to, to have a chat to because he could help you out with that. Mm. 
So not all the people you mix with are going to be great partners, and sometimes your competition can be great partners as well. I call it cooperation, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's that's a, I think that's a wanky phrase. So you can put that down as a wanky. <laughs> phrase. I'm just going to interrupt and say that Warwick's already used that phrase today hey, get in another here. interview that we've record, pre-recorded, <laughs> and that phrase did come up. So yeah. how's that? It hasn't yeah. been trademarked yet, mate. So that's <laughs> open slather on that one. <laughs> but a simple thing of going in and asking these people, what can I help you out with? And a lot of times it can be as simple as, you know what, we just want someone to rely on that answers their, answers their phone because I know that the statistics out there on people answering their phone to the trades is very, very low. I mean, if anyone's listening to this and they don't have a full-time receptionist or a, uh, an, a virtual assistant of some sort... Do you uh, know any? <laughs> I, I, do have, I do have an one. But you, I mean, that's how we met because yeah. I wanted to source out where you can get virtual assistant. But it's like you're crazy because that's that's usually the biggest bone of frustration that I can't get through to the trading. And I think a lot of tradies love being on the tools. And I think, you know what, if they love being on the tools and I really don't want to run the full-time business, then freaking stay on the tools. But and be smart enough to know that you employ someone to do the crappy jobs that you don't want to do. And they're not necessarily crappy for everyone, but they're crappy for someone who wants to be on the tools. And then everyone's happy. So it can be as simple as that. So the simple question, what can I do? How can I help you? And then, then the biggest thing on that is then to then go, right, give them an option. Say, hey, you know what? This, I think I might be able to help you out with that. Don't try and seal the deal on that first meeting though. I find that if you're trying to go in and, uh, in many ways, I'd say don't even talk about your business hardly at all. Mm-hmm. Don't say anything. Don't even offer it until they say, well, tell me about what you do. And you go, well, this is the sort of stuff I do. <clears throat> And then I'd say, then organize another time to sit down and go, right, look, that was fantastic. That was great. Um, uh, I think there's a few things I can put together for you and let's sit down and have a cup of coffee or a beer or whatever is appropriate. And let's have, let's, let's have a chat about how we could do, how we could help each other out. It is as simple as that. Now, the key with this is, uh, it's simple. It's effective and you got to follow up. So it's important thing is if you're going to do this, make it a priority. Now, it doesn't cost you anything except a cup of coffee and writing a list of people out. A lot of times you may not know the people. You can actually employ, you can go on and get a virtual assistant on, on many different ways to find that, but you can actually get someone to create a list for you. You go online, you can find people that, I don't know, Dupmacat, is that the sort of stuff you do? Oh, look, not really. There's certainly so there's people that specialise yeah. in that. Yeah. So they can just go out or, or you just get you get someone or a friend or you know your, your partner or someone, even yourself on a Sunday afternoon, sit down and go, just Google in your area who are the architects, the real estate agents, the who are, you know the other trades that are like yours. Now you'll know your mates, and chances are it's kind of like chances are your mates are not going to refer you heaps. They'll do a mm-hmm. bit. Chances are it's actually going to be someone that you thought was left field, and you were a bit nervous to ask, and you're a bit nervous to have a chat to, and that ends up being one of the best partners that you'll ever have. But you didn't know that until you went out there and actually asked them. There's a great example from another guest we had on the show a few episodes back, Nick May from Walls by Design over in uh, Colorado in the States. <clears throat> and uh, Gee, You guys are getting the big uh... boys here, eh? <laughs> Man, you guys are stepping it up. We're global. <laughs> um, but he, uh, part of his business growth came from an alliance or a partnership he had with a, an external house painter. Um, and so Nick mm-hmm. only does interior painting oh. and the external house painter actually got in touch with him and they formed this great partnership where, you know, if the external painter got a, a lead from somebody who wanted internal paint, it's like, hey, go use Nick and, and the team oh. involves by design and vice versa. And it literally took his business to the next level. Yeah, um, it's that, oh, man, that is the best example. And I think that's when I talk about competition. Sometimes like, oh, they're painters. Oh, man, I'm not going to send you business. That's right. Man, that is the, I've worked with a lot of physical trainers and, uh, and they think, oh, well, I can't, you know, I can't send someone else, uh, you know, uh, business because, you know, they're a personal trainer and I'm a personal trainer. It's like, man, you're crazy. There's so much areas in personal training. Like you, you work with women, you work with uh, women who are, uh, uh, post babies, you work with, uh, executives, you work with prof- uh, professional athletes. Like there's so many different areas to actually niche in. And when people think, oh, they're all things to all people, they're nothing to nobody and they end up, uh, you know, really stagnating. So I love that example. I think in that, when I was talking about the different sequence from the, the bathroom renovation person right through to the, the roof restoration, there's so many people that can be involved and can be sending you a heap of business. And the thing is, mm-hmm. when you get someone saying, hey, go and see Bob, he's an absolutely fantastic roof restoration guy, guess what? The conversion they get is way, way high as far as them becoming client. And it's a way easy sale. I think I find that most trades, in fact, 90% of people hate doing sales. 
It's like, man, if you're going to go and spend money doing marketing, spending brochures and doing like all this stuff that oh, sometimes I wonder if people actually looked at how much money they put out, what they got back, they wouldn't do it. But they're, they're getting a client that's a, or a lead that's essentially cold. And it's like, man, if anyone hates doing sales, you're just asking for more of that. Like if you don't do any of that crap, which is good crap, but you know, if you don't do any of that crap, <laughs> Uh, and just do partnerships it means all the people that are coming to you are much happier to come to you. You're getting a referral. They've already got a testimony from you of, of, from the person who's referred them. And then, boom, you're set to go. And I think if people actually understood this, if you just think now, if you think that you got, let's say, 10, you might have to go and speak to 20 to 30 people. And let's say you can see, let's say you do do your list. So let's, let's say it's 30 people. Let's go on that. Let's go on the high, high side. Let's say over a month you saw one person a day. Let's say it's one every two days. Let's say you do it over two months. So, you know, take, take you're taking your time. So you have two coffee meetings. Um, uh, sorry, you do you know, one every two days. So it's that maybe three or four coffee meetings a week. Do that over two months. You've gone and seen at least 30 people. Uh, you'll get at least 10 people out of that. One and three, it's about right, who actually will refer you consistently. There'll be some that'll do it sporadically. But you think about that. If you've got 10, anyone's doing the numbers on this, if you got 10 people that refer you leads. Now, let's imagine if they only refer you one lead per month. That's like 10 fresh new leads. Now, depending on the type of business that you're in, uh, you may you, you may need to do more, you may need to do less. If you're building a house, getting 10 leads, probably, you know, if you're a builder, you probably don't need that many. It's probably way more. If you're doing something that your average sale is a lot lower, you might have to do more partnerships. But you got 10 of those. And they're all referring you 10 leads. That's 10 new leads. Chances are that your conversion rate is going to be 9 out of 10 anyway or higher. All of a sudden, you've just grown your business significantly. The client's happier because they've got someone they can trust and you're going to give them a good service. The person who referred them now looks good and even better in their client's eyes because mm. they've now gone, oh, wow, thanks, you sent me Bob and he's been fantastic. And you're happy because you've got these leads you didn't have to pay for money for. And if you really want to, you can actually give a discount to the client because you've saved some money or you can give some cash back to, to the person referred to. You don't have to do that, but that that's something that you can really do. And I'd suggest that it doesn't matter who you are or what you do in business, that very, very simple strategy is key to growing any business and you can absolutely smack it out of the park in a very, very short period of time and uh, get a significant number of leads that come in. I think it's such a great point and the kicker is um, that low or zero dollar investment, and I'm all about bang for buck uh, marketing strategies with my clients uh, and trying to find those those free strategies, and apart from the time investment, uh, setting up some of these partnerships is just gold. So, so look, it's a fantastic strategy. We're all sold on it. It's a great idea. How come more people don't do this stuff, Dave? Yeah, I think one of the one is people just don't know. They don't. They, they kind of hear they get a referral, but they actually do. You know, I'm, I, I'm sure you would have mentioned some of the other podcasts around testing and measuring. So, do do whatever the thing is to grow your business or marketing, and then go measure the results. Now. Most people just don't do that. But if they actually measure where their business come from, uh, and and I really learned this one because it was more natural for me anyway. And secondly, just looking at, look, you know, I work with literally thousands of people now and I get to see their financials and we go, well, how did this happen? When you actually do the testing and measuring, what I found is consistently, time and time and time again, the bulk of the leads will come from referrals or some sort of referral system. And it's like, well then let's divert some more energy and money that way. So one is I don't think they know. Second thing, if they test and measure, they'll change their, their tune on it. I think third thing is people get nervous about what to say and about how to approach people. And, and the easy thing is really pick up the dog and bone and ring someone up or if you've got an assistant to, to ring up and say, hey, um, Bob, uh, I'm in the area. Uh, I, I love what you do. Check out their website. Check out what their presence is anyway. And, uh, and say, look, I love, I love, uh, the, your vision. I love your values. I love what you're actually doing. Um, I'm in the area. Is there any chance I could take you out for a cup of coffee on the house on me? I just want to find out a bit more about you. And literally, I'd go in there and find out more about them because you may not want to do a partnership with some people. <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. and you don't want to be associated with them. So go in there and say, look, I want to find out about you. And, and you get in there, look, uh, you know, 
and then sit down and have a meeting. And you find if you bring 10 people uh, and you do it in that way, you're going to get at least 7 out of 10 people. So you might need to ring 40 people to get 30 meetings to end up having uh, probably you'll probably end up around 15 to 20 people will refer you something and then there'll be 10 that'll be consistent referrers and, and out of that 10 maybe two or three you'll basically double your business on those so it's literally just going in there and asking the question how can i help you what can i do for you what are you trying to get done and as simple as doing that uh you know it it, it can be done and it's easy i think if people know to know how they just got to get out there and do it. Sometimes they're scared of making the phone call. That's okay. That's normal. You know, get over it. If you want to grow your business, you can do it. Or get someone in your business who can do it. So you don't always have to be the business owner if that's totally not your nature. Mm. Find someone who can do it for you. And something I like to, to uh, get tradies to do is stop looking at it as a sales call and just think about it as making another friend in business. Oh, so, it, so just totally. making business friends because oh. we buy from people we like. So if you just, as you said, go out and meet some more potential partners. I mean, obviously we want to pick the people we want to become friends with in business, but just go make some more business friends. And it's amazing how they will feel like referring to us because there was some synergy there or that we struck it off, you know, maybe we both served in the armed forces years ago, whatever, there'll be some commonality. And those people will just naturally refer to people they like. Uh, and provided you do a good job, which I know all of our listeners do, uh, then it just becomes a natural progression from there. Yeah, and I think that the word I said very early uh, in the beginning of this recording or this podcast was uh, the word collaboration. So uh, it's about collaborating. It is about having business friends. It's about working together. And sometimes what you'll find is some of the best Partners, I use that word partner. Sometimes people get caught up on the word partner. It's not a leap. In this sense, I'm not talking the legal partnership type mm-hmm. arrangement. I'm talking about collaborating yep. together. And the, the, in this sense around collaboration, some of the best people that you'll end up, end up collaborating with won't send you a single lead at all. And that's because they're not able to. They're not in a position to. However, what they'll do from a mindset or a peer group or just giving you insight into your business is going to be huge. Or it could be that they're connected to people with money and you need some money to then grow and build your team or to buy a, a great bit of kit or equipment. That, that, so partners don't always have to be about bringing more more leads into your business. They can definitely be about giving you more insight. They can be about getting more uh, investment into your business uh, as as well. So... Uh, and it could be an introduction. So one of the best, the best sorts of collaboration you can do is someone that introduces you to someone. So if you're thinking now, this is probably a great thing. Think now the most connected person you know in your industry, in your area. And often it is someone like a real estate agent, someone who's very outgoing and knows everyone. And I go to them first and say, I'm buying you lunch. It's on me. Take them somewhere nice and go, I need a referral to an architect, a plumber, an electrician, a real estate, another real estate agent maybe, or a property developer or a builder. They'll know there's always someone who's the go-to person that they kind of know everything yep. in their community. Go to them and get introductions. And then you've got an introduction to another person you can collaborate with. So partnerships is on a higher level is it's a, it's a, it's actually a way of doing business more than just getting leads, although that's, the ultimate result that ends up happening. And I know a really easy way with our guys um, often when they're hesitant to do this is just starting to going to networking meetings at local commerce and breakfasts and just start interacting with other people and people in the business community and then you can start having those conversations. But at least dipping your toes in the water, being confident in networking and then take it from there. Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, I mean, when I first uh, started doing networking, I freaked out. I didn't like it. I felt I was stressed. My heart rate would race all the way from the beginning <laughs> to the end. And to be fair, if I have to be let my hand on heart, it still does that now. Mm. I'm not like a gun at like, uh, even though I love people and doing that, it's still, I don't feel comfortable around doing that. But, you know, I'll still do it. I'll still do it. I think the more social they are as well, the yeah. more fun they can actually be. So you find networking like pulling teeth, Dave? <laughs> Pulling teeth. Is I fun. had to get one in there. Come on, I had to get that in there. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't go an episode oh. without. Pulling, it. Pulling teeth is fun. Most people would never get the experience. Pulling teeth is great fun. It's like popping a big zip. Oh, oh, only, only a big dentist, <laughs> only a former dentist would say that. Mate. I tell you, it is, it is, uh, it is gold. So. That's hardcore. So um, look, there, David does have a process um, or a bit of a checklist. Uh, more so to uh, to take you through when you're looking at partnerships, listeners. So um, we will put that up in the show notes uh, for today's episode. But um, mate, 
One question we always like to ask our guests is if you had a thousand tradies in a room, what's what's one piece of advice you'd just love to impart with them? The piece of advice I would leave with them is if they've got a passion, they've got a dream, they've got a desire to have a business that's going to give them the lifestyle that they want, then absolutely they can do it and then they need to go for it. They need to, they need to strap it on and they need to, to go for it. If they just take some time out to focus on the business and learn how to, how to grow the business, then they can absolutely do it. They can create that lifestyle and the quickest, fastest, easiest, best way to do that is through the power of collaborating with partners. Great Excellent. stuff. It's a nice bow, So all our listeners are now going to have double their income by next year. Yeah. So our job is done. <laughs> That's it. We've achieved our mission here at the Tradies <laughs> Business Show. So thanks so much for your time today, David. We really appreciate it. And thanks for uh, sorting out this collaboration, mate. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Cool. And look, to all, to all the guys that are listening and the, and the girls that are listening, uh, you know, I encourage you to keep on listening because there's some absolute pure gold. I listened, uh, and loving, loving all the stuff you guys are doing and, uh, you know, you can do it. That's the last message I'd love to say. Great cool. Stuff. And if people want to find out more about you, how can they get in touch with you and, and maybe have a chat with you and, and see how you could perhaps, you know, help with their partnerships? Yeah, sure. Uh, if they go to my, uh, my personal website, so da- www.daviddugan, and that's d-u-g-a-n.com, and go on there, they can, they can, uh, go on and, and register on, on there. And I'm happy if you, if you give me the link, or you actually drop that you're at, from the Tradies VA, uh, show, I'm happy to, <laughs> Put out a Tradies VA show. Yeah. <laughs> Mikhail's been trying to take over this, this gig for ages, mate. <laughs> yeah, we always know that's the women behind the scenes. Come right. on. She's in the driver's seat. But mate. yeah, the trading show is like, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to give them 15 minutes of what I call a turbo session as a, as a freebie. Um, as long as they drop the line that they're from, you know, from your show. So happy to do 15 minutes. And they can also have my little checklist on, uh, on how to do a partnership as well. Yeah. Well, we and this a special is... link on uh, the show yeah, page as well for anybody that wants to register for that. So very generous, David. Thank you very yep. much, mate. And, uh, again, thanks very much for coming on the show today. Thank you. So if you want to be a member of the Tradies VA, oh, I mean, um, yeah, Tradies right, Business right. Toolkit, <laughs> which is our membership site, you will be able to, um, listen to David go through the checklist that he mentions in detail. And believe me, that's worth the $1 alone for the 30 days that you'll get. So. Yep. So you, you'll, uh, you'll see that there's some selection criteria and the phases of uh, partnership plan development. Uh, and so Dave takes us through step by step. Uh, how to do that well. And, um, yeah, as Michaela said, it's only a buck. And, uh, we were going to call it the Tradies VA show. <laughs> but funnily enough, we settled on a different name for it. Um, so that was a bit of a Freudian slip, I think, on Dave's part. Good thing my ego is not that fragile. Um, <clears throat> but thanks again to Dave. Great, uh, great interview. And yeah, really stoked that, that, uh, Dave hooked us up. And, uh, you know, the Tradies Business Show is an example of one of those partnerships where we just uh, collaborated openly. Um, and this is the sort of amazing thing that you can create when you actually uh, get one of those partnerships in place. And I know as a listener of the show, you will agree with us. Oh, you are the winners in this partnership. <laughs> Listen to us go. Anyway, uh, good session. And um, until next time. All right. Now, hang on. Do we tell people oh, I was how ready they... to wrap it up. I didn't want so, you to talk anymore. Hey, we've got to plug our membership site. Yeah. Come on. All right. So, is this the Tradies VA one or the yeah, other one? Yeah, no, the real one. Yeah, so okay. head to tradiesbusinesstoolkit.com and you can sign up there, some big yellow buttons, and it's $1 for the first 30 days. And what do you get for that dollar, <laughs> I hear you ask? You get uh, access to our private Facebook community, um, online videos and business learnings and monthly webinars, resources, checklists, all sorts of templates, so lots of stuff. So just a dollar, try it out. Everything will be there for you to have a look at. And then it's just $10 a month uh, if you join before the 30th of June and become a special foundation member. Then after that, the price will go up. Are we going to send people like a little pin or something to, to say they're a foundation member or because we've given them such a discount? Uh, like, maybe a pink you, slash or something they can <laughs> wear around. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, a dollar for 30 days, 10 bucks a month. It's crazy value. You get access to both Makara and myself and uh, a whole lot of tools. So if you don't get value from it, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hand deliver a carton of beer to you. There you go. That's the second episode you've promised that. So 
Third, to- third time's a charm. <laughs> no one takes you Keep up listening. <laughs> Can I say it now? Yeah. Until next time. Bye. Hey, Roo. You've been listening to the Tradies Business Show with Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. Want to get off the tools and into true business ownership? Find out how at tradiesbusinessshow.com.